Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, so it's been quite some time I have not been uh, on a Facebook live teaching. So now we are going to start again. Uh, so next three sessions uh, based on uh, pit instructions that uh, I'm planning to teach. Um, so today, the first one is the finding fullness in emptiness. So finding fullness in emptiness. And the next one is the finding light in the darkness. And the, after that, the third one is unification of three spaces so that uh, um, this is a very uh, ancient Dzogchen tradition, uh, uh, kind of considered as a very important uh, knowledge and practices it's called unification of three spaces. Uh, when I was uh, growing up, uh, my teacher, Yongzi Sanji Tenzin Rinpoche, who was very, very uh, kind and also wrathful at the same time. So he, when he, whenever he taught the teachings and when, when he taught about this unification of three space, he was kind of, I remember very clearly, he was emphasizing how important this practice is. So, so today's focus is finding fullness in emptiness. I wanted to speak this a little bit from, uh, from the source, trying to connect to the source, to the teaching, and to explain that from, from the point of view of my uh, limited understanding of it, and also uh, my experiences of it, so that how these teaching actually can uh, benefit us in a, in a real situation, in a real life, in a practical changes. Uh, I said that because sometimes I feel that, you know, in different traditions when people are teaching, uh, either sometimes it get, gets very dry, theoretical, intellectual, and somehow it doesn't make, don't, you don't feel at all what the discussion is uh, in, your, in your mind, in your heart, in your emotions. You don't feel at all. Somehow you're learning some new concepts. But sometimes it's the opposite problem that people talk about wisdom and people talk about compassions and also it becomes uh, uh, so um, not precise, not precise. You don't ex actually know what they're referring to, what wisdom is or what, what compassion is as far as the teaching is concerned, as far as the Buddha Dharma is concerned, and as far as these teaching in the Dzogchen is concerned. So everybody having their own interpretation of what wisdom, wisdom means or compassion means. And sometimes there seems like, from my point of view, they're a little bit off. So, so I'm trying to, always trying to see, not go into, uh, not get fall into one extreme to other extreme, uh, but really trying to bring them close together as much as possible. So that's the, I think the important, important I, I, I am trying to emphasize that here. So according to the Dzogchen teaching, the view, tawa, meditation, gompa, um, and uh, conduct is a chirpa. So view, meditation, and conduct, they, are, they all, three of them go together, very, very, very important. And uh, when we talk about, when I'm, when I'm talking about the finding fullness in emptiness, it has so much to do with the view. Because view has to do something with the emptiness. I will explain later why that is. And uh, when, I, when we will talk next session about finding the light in the darkness, the light has something to do with the, the awareness or aspect of compassion and awareness. And the, and the unification of three space has something to do with has something has to do with the subject as yourself and your perceived objects that the things that you identify with and then uh, the sky the space uh, beautiful clear sky um, 
that really, when you look at out, it really kind of teaches you what that unbounded sacred space look like when, the, when there's no clouds. It looks very um, boundless, very clear, and very luminous. It really tells that. So that unification of inner and your own identifier objects and outer sky when you unifying these three spaces, that's why it is referring to. But still, I'm going to come back to finding fullness and emptiness. So also in the tradition, it says ngowo tongpa. So the essence is empty, nature is clear, and the union or inseparable state is lundu. So these, these three things I think is important to remember. Essence is empty, nature is clear, and union is perfection. So, which is really what three, these three talks are about. So today, the, the essence is the empty. This is what we are talking. So according back to, tracing back to the teaching, that's what it means. Essence is empty. So let's talk a little bit about our own experiences of emptiness. Any given moment in our life, I know like there are a lot of people um, uh, when, when you go through very, very challenging, difficult moments in your life. We all go through that, those moments. We all, they, I don't think there's one person who does not go through that. We all go through that. When you go through those moments of emptiness, feeling some sense of deep sense of uh, um, empty, lonely, dark, hopeless, a sense of depression or feeling very depressed, these experiences, if you look at the nature of these experiences, why, why in the first place somebody is feeling like that? Why in the first place somebody is trying to find a lot of conceptual, rational thoughts, emotional reasoning, uh, to get in, get trapped into those things, why? So that is a good question. And why is because some sense of our identity, we can call ego, or we can call pain identity, we can call in Tibetan, we could say dang zi, dak zi, uh, grasping on the truth, or den zi, or den zi, denbar zimba, grasping on the truth, or dak zi is self-grasping, so this grasping mind, holding on something, and particularly something that you cannot really hold on, something that you cannot really identify with, or something is not really good to identify with, such as our um, pain or our weakness or our conflict or confusions or things like that. So, so these experiences are somehow very much connected with the sense of I grasping it. So when I does not find anything, so I'm, I mean, basically, I think it's good to all of you to just kind of reflect in yourself a little bit, that sense of emptiness. How do you feel it? How do you actually feel that emptiness? A feeling some deep sense of luck of something. A loneliness. Or trying to keep busy to ignore it. When you truly go deep inside, address it, how do you feel it? That sense of grasping, it, it feeling there's nothing to particularly to grasp on anything, but the mind is still grasping on something. Mind is still grasping on something when there is nothing to grasp on. So it's it's like a it's trying to it's still trying to cling on something when there is nothing to grasp. Nanzi neme jigbe nyamjitu. So. So then it, one is feeling like some sense of also like a sad 
or, or something like a disappointed or something that not able to grasp on anything, feeling like a hopeless or helpless. When that happens, in way, in one way, when that happens, it's not necessarily bad experience. As far as the practitioner is concerned, it's not necessarily bad thing to happen. Because then you kind of know, you know where you are. It's like this sense of empty. In, in the teaching, when talking about emptiness and realization of emptiness, understanding of emptiness, somehow you are actually closer to that. It's just kind of just turning it around. You're very close to it, to recognize it. Or you might never recognize it because sometimes closeness does not make enough differences. To those who are prepared, ready, lucky, ripen, might shift that realization, that moment, I'm feeling so empty and this is really, there's nothing there. A sense of awakening, a real realization through that, through that pain or through that deep sense of emptiness. So what I'm saying, in some sense, these experience of emptiness, in a way, we are very closer to it because that is a suffering, that is a, like a pain and suffering that we are experiencing that moment. And there, in a way, we are closer to that wisdom also. So first of all, I think in some sense, uh, recognizing that, seeing, yes, I might be, if you're not completely um, understanding what I'm saying or not agree with what I'm saying, uh, at least one can think about maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it's possible that I, I might be closer to that wisdom when I'm feeling this lost, this lonely, or this empty. So how, what, 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 what are the, what, what kind of things that experientially might help to get there is to trying to recognize that. First, first of all, being open and recognize, recognizing that. So this sense of emptiness, feeling of emptiness, rather than grasping it, rather than looking for something and feeling again empty, getting repeating that looking and looking and finding nothing and feeling empty and feeling bad, repeating that cycle just for a moment with some sense of recognition, able to just rest. Instead of going back and forth, looking, not finding, feeling bad, looking, not finding, feeling bad, looking, not finding, feeling bad. That is the cycle hours and days and weeks and lifetime we spend. So some point there, trusting yourself, trusting Refuge Tree, trusting all the support that you have, you feel you, people in your life, feeling a positive support around your life. And resting so the resting is the key and um, and through resting that sense of loneliness will become more friend than the enemy that sense of sense of emptiness might turn into like a fullness rather than feeling just empty and lonely and bad so therefore that is why finding some sense of fullness in emptiness means in experience that what means good question is have you ever felt that have you ever tried that there's no question about have you ever felt emptiness sometimes sense of loneliness and some sense of isolation that's not a question right we one time another time we all have that the question here is have you ever turn it around have you ever recognized you might be closer to that wisdom? Have, have you ever 
Are you awakened from that sense of trust and your strength and finding that wisdom, finding that fullness in that emptiness? Yes, wonderful. I hear that smile and yes, that's wonderful. Yes, so if, 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 if some of you felt that way, you know, others, others, others who did not feel that way, for sure, you're going to feel that way. It's a question of trusting that. Second, Tungdu uh, Rangmashene Chamdan Yingjigum. So when, when, when you feel some, some, some sense of pain by feeling empty, when you feel some sense of down by feeling empty, when you feel some sense of loneliness, feeling down by feeling emptiness, because emptiness is causing feeling lonely, depressed, and feeling hopeless. That's what it's causing. So basically there is some sense of suffering in you, pain in you. And you recognize your pain, like, right? I am feeling pain. If, if, if my friend, if my best friend is feeling pain the way I am feeling pain, I would be gentle with my best friend. I will be more kind to my best friend. I will give a little break to my best friend. I will not judge my friend. Even though my friend is not an easy person, but still I will not judge in that moment. That's what we will do to our our best friends. We will do. That's what the good friends is about. Or at least also that's how people who have sense of a little bit more awareness and compassion would act like that. So the same way, why we don't act same way to ourselves like that? When we are feeling suffering, pain, as, as a result of feeling empty in our life, having a little bit more compassion to oneself, self-compassion. And not only feeling self-compassion, but also those moments, uh, very often, I think it's very hard to feel compassion to others when you're feeling so, so much down and feeling uh, so much pain, but you can feel compassion to other people. Because how much you are focused on yourself, how less focus on yourself will define your ability to have compassion to others or not. So compassion is not a weakness. Aggression is not necessarily a strength. Compassion can be so strong, so powerful, so transformative. So, so it's important to recognize those moments to have a little bit more uh, self-compassion to oneself and also, uh, if it's possible, self-compassion to others. Probably it's difficult, but, but when it's possible, it's very transformative also. So these, what I'm trying to say here is these are like a um, the basis, the experiences of emptiness in life are like a basis of growth. That's what I'm trying to point out. Basis of growth or development, awakening, and that's what it is. If you awaken from that sense of emptiness, then it's the, you're finding a fullness or you're finding a, finding a purpose of that emptiness. So, when, when this sense of emptiness, when you rest, when you recognize, when you se have some sense of warmth and compassion, when it clears, tong sal, which means when the emptiness illuminates, when emptiness illuminates, when the empty room is uh, turned on light, the light is on in an empty room, dark room, when emptiness illuminates, then that is like the basis of the bliss or the basis of joy. 
a basis of your strength. So in, in a way, like if you think about the teachings like a Tummo teachings or something like that. These Tummo teachings, when people say awakening of subtle wind and subtle consciousness and it produces the bliss, that's what it is. Subtle mind, subtle awareness is the awareness of emptiness. So anyway, so so when the this sense of empty becomes luminous, and that becomes the basis of bliss, bliss, or warmth. But the warmth, not like a weak warmth, not like a yeah warmth with wisdom, wisdom warmth. Enlightened warmth. So this is that's the becomes the basis of that. And the last one I wanted to say is Tongba Tongba So this this also this emptiness when we are feeling emptiness when we when we recognize we are closer to it when we recognize letting go of grasping when we are able to rest, when we are able to have compassion, when we are able to clear, then what happens? That emptiness is also a basis of perfection. It's called basis of perfection. So basis of, uh, well, means spontaneous perfection. Uh, the basis for a source of quali positive qualities a source of positive quality so that that emptiness just not remains only empty and void but it becomes a sources of positive qualities that the qualities the truly the qualities which you need that particular given time moment in your life to evolve yourself fully that is that can be discovered those quality those positive quality will discover or can be discovered in in that emptiness. So I think um, in um, I don't want to just talk too much about it, but I think I covered the main thing what I wanted to cover. Um, so the main thing was I was trying to say is this the finding fullness in emptiness, which. I know like in, as a title make kind of sense to all everybody but but on the other hand if we really keep on asking what do you actually uh, what I mean by that you know or or what what do you really understand about it then maybe we we trying to narrow down and push each other more and more and more some point we might get lost not to know what exactly we are referring to what we are talking about what ex experientially what we can actually do what actually is can change our life my life and we might get lost so I think my point is not to get lost, to, ha to have the source of the, the teaching. Because that is where one can trust more. Many, many masters and teachers who have achieved realization through that. So, but trying to understand those teachings from the point of view of one's own, whatever the need and the limitations of what one is experiencing at one particular given moment in our life. To understand that, because we might be so different places in a different time situations. And each person might understand it differently, benefit it differently. So, so trying to source understanding, putting them together. And, and finding these positive qualities in that emptiness. And Tongba Jura Meba Topjishi. So this also emptiness, this one we call sometimes boundless emptiness. Boundless emptiness is also a source of strength because it is indestructible, undestructible. Uh, that un undestructible experiences 
from that emptiness can be a greatest source of strength. So it is a source of strength. It is a source of all the positive qualities. It is a, a source of where one can really feel a wisdom, compassion. It is also the source where one can feel a lot of support in, in, instead of it destroying you. When one does not grasp it again, again, not finding it, grasping it, not finding it, grasping it, not repeating that pain, identities, weak behavior, but able to let go, let go for a moment, able to rest deeper with a sense of all the trust that one can feel around. So that, that is all. And uh, so I hope it makes some sense. So I would like to do a short guided meditation. And so all of you sit comfortably. takes few deep breathings. And exhale any stale breath, dead airs, discomforts, thoughts, just breathe it out, few deep breathings. and bring into a conscious, into awareness, that sense of deep emptiness, lost, disconnectedness, or feeling depressed, feeling down, feeling weak. Recognize also sometimes we pretend to be feeling good and and trying to keep busy also because sometimes we are trying to avoid just recognize deep go closer to that sense of empty feeling and recognize what kind of empty feeling it is. A sense of feeling pain, weak, lost. No purpose. and recognize 
in the, in the deep insight, there is a sense of I, it's grasping on them. A very deep rooted sense of I grasping on that emptiness and feeling label labeling it like a duck, a wrong, negative sense of empty. Recognize that. It's almost like energetic. It's like a conceptual grasping. It is like a dangzi, self-grasping in a negative way. And to that self-grasping, to that pain. But also recognize this, this experience is also closer to the fullness. Because you are experiencing a sense of empty. Recognize, not to grasp, repeat, not to repeat, look for, not find, feel bad, look for, not find, feel bad, not repeat that. Just recognize and rest. Rest with a sense of deep trust in yourself, in a refuge tree, in whatever you believe in. And I, as I play the mantra of clear light, so that basically mantra of sale wu, that's what it means, literally it means that. Sale means clear or ability to clear, clearing. Wu means its ability to illuminate. Mantra will help to clear that sense of dark, sense of empty, and to illuminate. Just rest and listen and feel collective support. This is a, um, all the people here in the Cyber Sangha who consider it as a part of the Cyber Sangha, practicing together. I think in some sense it's a beautiful for all of us to not, um, you know, no logistic problems, very easy, no registration, no payment, no, nothing. It's a simply able to come together and able to connect with each other, able to support, with, support each other. This is a beautiful, so feel that sense of support that we are giving all of us to each other, sense of support, we are supporting each other. So I feel supported by all of you and my, I open my heart, I send my support to all of you and each one of you do the same, same thing with each other because that intention, the inner language, does opens up energetic connections and we're all able to support each other like that. So listen and support each other and feel a sense of fullness in that emptiness.
Okay. So how was the meditation? How everybody's doing? Welcome to share your experiences. And I hope both in, in terms of intellectually and experientially make sense and also on a, on a personal level, I hope this makes sense, that some sense of uh, those moments that everybody goes through, there is a hope there, there is a light there, there is some sense of fullness there, there is a, some sense of a source of strength there. There is some sense of discovering your call it positive qualities there. So uh, that's very, very important. So thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, see you next time. So those who are watching World Cup, Matt, uh, enjoy world cup mat so uh, i don't know how many people are watching or not i am definitely uh, going to watch the game so so enjoy the game those you're watching and all the best wishes